When people move, it is the result of thousands of chemical reactions and processes going on in their body. Each individual movement is started in the brain where an impulse is formed and then travels through the nervous system to deliver the signal to the muscles, which then contract. A signal sent from the brain is transmitted through specific sensory cells called neurons. Neurons have a small cell body with a long extension called an axon. They can be divided into three subcategories. These are sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons. Here, motor neurons are responsible for the movement of a person. However, if the person hurts themselves, Ow! sensory neurons pick up a pain signal and send it to the brain. Let's look at how neurons send signals. Neurons at rest are negatively charged on the inside of the membrane and have a positive charge on the outside of the membrane. When a signal is transmitted, sodium ions move into the neuron, reversing the charges. This causes a domino effect along the neuron as more sodium moves into the cell. Where two neurons meet, neurotransmitters in one neuron are released and diffused into the neighboring neuron, continuing the signal from one cell to the next. This is essentially how signals are transmitted throughout the body. Once a person has been injured, they might take some moderate painkiller to help them dull the pain. Some common kinds are aspirin and ibuprofen. These are both classified as NSAIDs, which stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. NSAIDs cover a broad range of medications that are used to treat pain, inflammation, and fever. Once an area of the body has been hurt, the cells at the injured site will begin to synthesize hormones known as prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are a specific type of hormone that sensory neurons transmit to the brain, telling it that an area of the body is injured. Unlike other hormones, prostaglandins aren't made by a specific organ. Most cells in the body can make this hormone. It's synthesized using the enzyme cyclooxygenase. These non-prescription painkillers work by irreversibly inhibiting cyclooxygenase, basically stopping the production of prostaglandins. If no prostaglandins are formed, the injured part of the body can't send a pain signal to the brain, which means you feel less pain. Another popular painkiller that isn't an NSAID is Tylenol. Acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol, works directly on the brain. It switches off the perception of pain in the brain, making it one of the most effective over-the-counter painkillers. You might think that NSAIDs are just about perfect. They can relieve pain without any noticeable side effects. However, research has proven that these drugs such as Advil, Aspirin, Motrin, and Aleve can actually be harmful if used excessively. They can all have adverse effects on organs, mainly your liver, kidneys, and stomach. Let's look closer at how it affects your stomach. In the stomach, cyclooxygenase 1 plays an important role in gastric mucosal protection. NSAID inhibition of COX-1 can diminish this COX-1-mediated protective mechanism. This can lead to GI side effects, such as irritation and bleeding. In fact, the second most common cause of peptic ulcers is regular use of NSAIDs. Tylenol can also be bad for your body. When your body metabolizes or breaks down acetaminophen, some of the products are toxic to your liver. If the concentration of these toxins is too high, your liver could fail.